All right. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. As always, we'd like to first and foremost give all praises to the Most High Ahaya, Bashim Yasha, Wakakamawa. That is the Most High Power, Ahaya, his son Yasha, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus and wisdom, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Hebrew is Kakamawa. And that is actually going to be uh, the title of this lesson, uh, the true name of the Holy Spirit, Kakamawa. Uh, but before we get into that, as always, we'd like to do our disclaimer here at the Servants of the Scattered Sheep. We teach according to St. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Uh, we teach and we baptize all nations. Uh, so we don't judge on appearance. Uh, we don't look at someone and say, you know, they're Israel, you know, based off how much melanin they have. Or, you know, we don't deny anyone. Rather, we judge according to the spirit as Yahshua commanded us. Um, also with that, you know, we do not sit in the most high seat. We don't separate the goats from the sheep, nor the tares from the wheat. Um, that is for our Savior to come and do when the time is right. And with that, um, the title of the lesson is The True Name of the Holy Spirit, Kakamawath. And um, this is, uh, you know, just kind of reviewing something we went over back in August, um, the middle of August, came into this knowledge. And, um, you know, it kind of was received negatively um, just, just based on some things that were might have been going on and um you know so with that we just hope to present this in all humility meekness and pray that brothers and sisters receive this as we go over this information uh, we're going to stick to how the bible commands us to get understanding so with that we you know we get understanding through the precepts um so with that we're going to stick in the book we're going to stick in the king james um and if you have your concordance, you might want to grab that. Uh, but we're going to be in the regular King James and also the Apocrypha for, for a few verses. Um, so with that, let's get right into it. So how do we get wisdom and how do we get understanding? We need to first distinguish whether King Solomon, the author of Proverbs, Wisdom of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes, and Songs of Solomon, we need to distinguish whether he was speaking metaphorically in instances or directly when the word wisdom occurs um, in the King James Bible and also in the Tanakh. You know, there's different forms and variations for the word wisdom in the Hebrew language. So first, we must establish how we are to receive understanding out of the Bible. And one of the foundational precepts we learned when we first came into the truth was Psalms 119 and 104. So that is going to be the first precept that we get into tonight. And um, brothers and sisters on the conference call, I will be reading for myself. So with that, uh, once again, we're going to the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 104. And it reads, through thy precepts, I get understanding. So the Bible tells us clearly how we get understanding. It's through the precepts. So we don't need to go to any outside source of anything. Of course, we understand that the uh, Strong's Concordance is a tool that is to be used, but the Strong's Concordance is not the end all um, for any matter. And also, you know, there's other books that, you know, people might go into and, and try to break down the Hebrew language and might say, well, this is a collateral form, you know, this is that type of form. And what we need to realize is just like the scriptures are written, that is how we receive the word. Um, so once again, going to Psalms 119, 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So anything outside of getting understanding through the precepts can be counted as a false way. Everything that we go through, whether it be history, any type of information, we must parallel that with the scriptures and verify it. Um, so with that, we're going to get to the next verse, which is 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So just like I got through saying that we must filter everything through the scriptures, the word is the lamp. The word is the light. So anything that's, that does not correlate with the Bible more than likely is something that can't be validated is something that we shouldn't deal with or get into because the bible the bible has to correlate with any and everything that we get into anything that we bring out that is the, what we go to that is the oracles that was given unto us by the most high 
So we're going to stay in the same chapter that Psalms 119, but let's jump up to verse 100. And let's, let's read some more of what David was speaking. And it reads, I understand more than the ancients because I kept thy precepts. So we can understand more than the ancients as long as we stick to these precepts. As long as we, everything that we do, we go to the scriptures, get one, one or two witnesses that can verify that. You know, we can't just go and take one verse and make a doctrine out of it. You know, there has to be several occurrences where the Bible is, is, is witnessing about the same thing. And the same thing, you know, when it comes to these other texts that uh, brothers and sisters like to get into that can't be validated as actually being part of the scriptures. They'll take one one verse and run with that and make a doctrine with that. So we need to establish that this is how all understanding comes forth through the precepts. So let's now we're going to stay in the same chapter 119 uh, for those who are just joining us. And let's jump down to verse 128. We're going to get get some more out of this. So again, we're in Psalms 119 and verse 128. And it reads, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. So once again, this is, you know, valid, you know, going back, it correlates with verse 104, but it expounds a little bit more here in 128. It says, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. So that is how we determine what is right and what is false. Um, so with that, now that we, get, we got an understanding on how we get understanding, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, is through the precepts. So now let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's get chapter 28 and verse 9. And I know these verses that I'm hitting at this moment, you know, aren't dealing, you know, with the Holy Spirit and revealing that. But we're just establishing how we get understanding. And I know we all know these scriptures, but you know this is how we this is how we uh, go through for those that might be new. I might catch this on YouTube, uh, random viewers on Periscope, um, someone that just decided to call in because we we shared the teleconference information on Facebook. This is how we get the precepts. This is how we get understanding. So once again, let's go to Isaiah chapter twenty-eight and verse nine, and it reads, "Whom shall he teach knowledge?" And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Jump down to verse 10. Because there's a way that things must come out. There's a way that we validate things. Verse 10 reads, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So we go through the entire Bible when it comes to a certain topic or a certain understanding. And we go and we look and we see what the entire Bible has to say on that one thing. And then we go through those precepts. And those precepts might have other precepts. And that's how we get understanding. We don't just go to one verse and like, for instance, what modern day Christians do, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. But yet they fail to go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Where that world that, that is actually being spoken of is the world of Israel, the nation of Israel. So with that, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and let's get verse 15. And Salaki, if it seems like I'm going a little fast through this, uh, brothers and sisters, um, but I'm going to try to move along, um, try to get this lesson, uh, you know, to be within 40 minutes or so. So once again, this is another scripture that we all, once we first came into this truth, we all were taught this scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. And it reads, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High. So, this just goes to show that you don't need to approve yourself unto any man. You approve yourself unto the Most High. A workman that needeth not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, it is a work, it is a task to go through the Bible. It is laboring in the word. And if you don't labor in this word, and you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you might be put to shame. Someone might come with verses and precepts and you might get cut and you might actually, in fact, have the correct understanding. You just don't know how to go about to bring it out because you learned from someone and you didn't take the time to break down the precepts and review it so that you can now teach others. So it's a very important thing that we must do as the nation of Israel, being that we are the first priest in the home and we are a, a royal priesthood. We are a nation of priests and kings. 
we must know how to use this book. It is our book. It is our history. It belongs to us. And if we are going to assume, uh, if we're going to take the rightful position as claiming this book to be ours in our, our records, we must know how to go through it and rightly divide the word of truth. Um, so with that, so now let's review different words in the Hebrew and see which ones would be specific to the Holy Spirit and which ones have a generic application. Uh, specific applications so we can determine which forms can be used metaphorically. So we're going to start with, um, in your Strong's Concordance, it's going to be Hebrew word H2451. Once again, that's H2451. And we're going to see its application. Um, this is a this is the word that um, some people believe to to be, you know, it is wisdom in the Hebrew, but some people believe it to actually be the name of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to go through the precepts to prove that this word is just an attribute. It's just a skill. It's not specific unto her. Um, so through the precepts, we're going to understand how it is actually applied. So first, we're going to get the word. Once again, that's H2451. And in the Hebrew, it is uh, Kakama. Once again, it is Kakama. And it is wisdom in a good sense. Skillful, wisdom, wisely, wit. And it occurs in the King James 149 times. Um, so we can see it's it's not specific um, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. So now, if you have the Browns uh, drives, the Briggs Drowns, Bri oh, <laughs> it's the Browns Driver Briggs uh, Dictionary that is also coded to the Strong Concordance, um, we can get a, a better definition. Um, and also, if you have your eSword, it does have that um, dictionary in it. Once again, it is Browns Driver Briggs. Um, so, it is Kakama, it is wisdom, it is skill in a war, wisdom in administration, shrewdness, wisdom, wisdom in prudence, uh, in religious affairs, wisdom, ethical, and religious. So that's the definition of Kakama, which is H2451. As we can see, this can be used in its various applications, mainly attributing it as a skill. Now let's get some precepts to get understanding on this. So um, the first scripture we're going to go to is going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 111. And we're going to get verse 10. And this is also another precept that we all learned as we came into the truth. So once again, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. And really, you know, pay attention to the key words here. I'm going to go ahead and read it now. It says, the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. So through fearing him is how we first get wisdom as far as knowledge and understanding and, and skill in the Bible. Uh, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. So let's go back to this. Uh, the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. If this actual word, uh, wisdom here, which is H2451, um, if this is applying to the Holy Spirit, I mean, it's kind of a funny funny way to ask but did the most high have to fear himself for wisdom to come about we know that you know that's a lot ah. so how can this wisdom right here be referring to the holy spirit so as we can see the variation of h2451 kakama is used um, let's really analyze its application this precept is speaking about the beginning of wisdom we can see context and application so once again, now let's ask ourselves a question. This verse is saying, the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. So did the Most High fear himself to bring her into existence? Let's review the Hebrew word for beginning in this verse also, which is going to be H7225. Once again, that's H7225, and it is Ra'ashyath, and it is the first in place, time, order, or rank. Uh, specifically a first fruit beginning chief chiefest first first fruits first part first time principal thing um, and in your brown's driver briggs definition it is first beginning best chief beginning first chief and choice part so once again it's a silly question to ask but did the most high fear himself so that wisdom can have a beginning we know absolutely not 
Um, so we know that according to this precept, this cannot be the word for the Holy Spirit. Um, so once again, so we must now ask ourselves, if her beginning was the fear of the Most High, did he fear himself to bring her into existence? This precept is saying the beginning of wisdom, is it not? So let's review some more precepts. Let's go to Proverbs 21 and 30. And right now, the precepts that we're going, we're going over are going to be hitting the H2451 variation of the word wisdom in Hebrew, which is kakam, kakama, salakia. So once again, we're going to Proverbs 21 and 30. And once again, Salaki brothers and sisters, if it seems like I might be rushing through this, I'm kind of dealing with some back pain. So, you know, brothers and sisters, can keep me in your prayers. Uh, it'll be definitely uh, appreciated. Um, so, once again, this is Proverbs 21 and 30. And it reads There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Most High. So now we see this precept speaking about wisdom in the context as a skill that could go against the Most High. Seeing that wisdom is the breath of the Most High, he could not go against himself. No one can think of, of what to say, and the wind from their lungs going through their vocal cords defies their speech. It's just a simple understanding. And to get a precept to bear witness to that, we're now going to go in your Apocrypha, and we are going to get Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 25. Once again, we are going to the Apocrypha. We're going to get Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 25. Give you all some time to get there. All right. And it reads, Salakia. <coughs> For she is the breath of the power of Ahia and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. So if she is the breath of the Most High, once again, the example is if you, you think of what to say and as the wind is come, going through your vocal cords and coming out, that can't defy what you meant to say. It's, it's going to come out as, as what you meant it to be. So the same thing. She cannot go against the Most High. So when we go back to Proverbs 21 and 30, there is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Most High. We can see that that word comma is just being used in the context of, of an application. Uh, so with that, we know that the Holy Spirit cannot go against the Most High. So now let's get another precept. We are now going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to get chapter 4 and we're going to get verse 5. And what we're doing here is just we're going through these precepts, establishing that the word comma uh, is used in a generic application. And uh, then we'll go over the actual work of Kamawath um, being specifically uh, and only for the Holy Spirit. So once again, we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. And it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Most High my power commanded me that ye should do. So do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Verse 6, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So here we have the same form, H2451, referring to the statutes and judgments the Most High commanded that we should keep. In the context of our skill of knowledge and understanding, leaking back to the definition speaking on, a skill as in wisdom and administration, in the general sense of how we operate wisely, linking to H2450. So um, with that, H2450, which we just um, we just went over in Deuteronomy 4 and 6, um, when, we, when we read in the middle of the verse, uh, Surely this, ha this great nation is a wise and understanding people. That wise is H2450, and that is the the actual parent word the masculine um word for wisdom and we all know that the female has to come out of the male because it was man created first and then the most high pulled that rib out of adam to bring forth the woman in the earth um, so we're going to get that that's the h2450 and that is calm and that is wise that is intelligent skillful or artful cunning cunning man subtle uh, wise, unwise, hearted man. So the definitions are self-explanatory. Let's get some more precepts. And let's keep in mind that Kakama 
occurs in the scriptures 149 times and a majority of its application is generic pertaining to a skill. So now we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes in the regular King James. Once again, that's Ecclesiastes. We're going to get chapter 10 and verse 1. Once again, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1. And it reads, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So do with a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. So now here we see that its application is referring to a person who is known to be wise and honorable. So these next few precepts we're just going to kind of run through. So now we're going to go to um, 2 Chronicles. We're going to get chapter 9 and verse 3. Once again, that's going to be 2 Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 3. And for those of you that have just tuned in, um, the title of this, of this lesson is The True Name of the Holy Spirit, Kakamawath. So here we have it, 2 Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 3. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built. So once again, we can see its application just like the other verse we just went over in Ecclesiastes, uh, the Queen of Sheba saw how wise Solomon was. So once again, this word that is being used is kakama. So now let's go to the book of Exodus. Let's get chapter 35 and verse 35. And also we're going to go over different words that um, are translated as wisdom in english but you know they're actually when it comes to the word wisdom being translated out of hebrew words there's like seven different hebrew words that have been translated into wisdom so we had to do some digging and, and do some research some fasting and prayer um and the most high he reveals so once again this is exodus 35 and 35 them hath he filled with wisdom of heart so keep keep in mind that word heart there because we're going to go over the we're going to go over the Strong's definition for that. So once again from the top, them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer, in blue and in purple, in scarlet and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. So in this verse is referring to the Most High putting the spirit of putting a spirit of wisdom of the heart putting these skills within men and women uh you know to to do this work that they were doing i believe um it is referring to when they uh, had made different types of linen and um things of that nature so once again i, I told everybody you know remember that word heart so from the top them hath he filled with wisdom of heart so that that word wisdom is h2451 which is kakama but let's also get the Hebrew word for that word heart, and it is H3820. And we're going to see that within this definition for this word, the definition also has wisdom in it, and it can be used as such. So, once again, that's H3820, and it is La'ab, and it is the heart. Also used figuratively very widely for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. Likewise, for the center of anything. Care for, comfortably, consent, considered, courageous, friendly, uh, broken-hearted, hard-hearted, merry-hearted, stiff-hearted, stout-hearted, double-hearted. Um, kindly, midst, mind-minded, regarded themselves, unawares, understanding well, willingly. And then the last word in that definition in your strong concordance is wisdom. Just going to show you that there are many different words um, that were translated into wisdom, that were translated into different words. Um, but when you go back, you can you can also one could could say one one that's unlearned can go to the definition and say, well, why can't this word be the one for the Holy Spirit? So now we're going to get some more precepts. We're going to go to Second Samuel's. We're going to get chapter fourteen, and we're going to get verse twenty. Once again, we're going to 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 20. 
and we're going to go ahead and read it. It says, and we're just, you know, these verses that we're just running through, they're kind of in the middle of stories and whatnot, um, but we're just going to get the context of the word uh, wisdom. And the, the variation of that word in Hebrew that we're going over is kakama. So, 2 Samuel 14, 20. To fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing, and my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of the Most High, to know all things that are in the earth. So this is talking about the wisdom of an angel. And we know the Holy Spirit, she is a set of part spirit, she is not an angel. So now let's use common sense. Is this, is this the Holy Spirit of an angel? Um, you know, what is she saying is her Lord... What she is saying is her Lord has all the knowledge and skill and understanding of an angel. So let's, we're going to stay in 2 Samuels. We're going to get chapter 20 and we're going to start at verse 20, verse 21 this time. Actually, you know what? Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that. Once again, that's 2 Samuels chapter 20 and verse 21. And it reads... <clears throat> and it reads, The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, and the son of, of Bichri, by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. And once again, this, this verse is talking about this specific woman that is being spoken about she has her own wisdom which is h2451 um, so keep in mind as we're going we're going through these the context and application of the actual work of karma is just that it's just a different form to attribute a skill to someone <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and finish this verse and they cut off the head of sheba the son of bikri and cast it out to joab and he blew a trumpet and they retired from the city, every man to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now let's ask ourselves another question. This word wisdom is now referring to the knowledge of a, spe a specific woman has, her very own knowledge. So is, is this the Holy Spirit? We can clearly see it's not. But, you know, hold on, brothers and sisters, we got, we got more precepts. Through the precepts, I get understanding. So let's understand the context and application of this word further. Uh, we're going to go through enough precepts just just to the point where it's it's driven into the mind that, hey, this this word right here is, in fact, just talking about a skill. It's not referencing the Holy Spirit. So we're now going to go to first Kings chapter two and verse five. Once again, that's first Kings chapter two and verse five. And it reads, Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab the son of Zariah did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, unto Abner the son of Ner, and unto Amasa the son of Jether, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his whore head go down to the grave in peace. So once again, this word wisdom is, is speaking about, matter of fact, I'm just going to read my notes here. It says, here we have David giving instruction to Solomon on what he should do to a specific man. Here the same form is used once again, H2451. As we can see once again, it really does have a generic application. He says, do according to thy wisdom, meaning according to your own skill. So we're going to stay in 1 Kings. We're now going to get chapter 4 and we're going to get verse 29. And these verses right here are really key, uh, brothers and sisters, because it's speaking about Solomon and the wisdom that he had. <clears throat> and we know that Solomon, he's the second wisest man on the earth next to Yasha. Yasha, he's, he, he's the one. But Solomon, he asked the Most High to bless him with knowledge and understanding so that he can, he can be a good king unto the people. What happened after all, all that, of course, we understand and we know. Uh, he was dipping and dabbling into stuff he shouldn't have, but for that time in the beginning, he was the wisest man on the earth. So none of us today here on earth are masters in the language of Hebrew. However, we know that King Solomon was a master in the Hebrew language, and he penned certain books that we're getting into. And he's the one that chose 
to use different forms for the word Hebrew or for the word wisdom slaki in the Hebrew so it'd be a very valid question to ask you know he would know so why is he using only specific words as opposed to generic words just keep that in mind so once again we're going into first Kings chapter 4 and verse 29 and the Most High gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore so this wisdom here is H2451 wisdom knowledge understanding Most High gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of the heart even as the sand that is on the seashore so just like the seed of Jacob is, is as the sand in the sea innumerable that's how much wisdom that Solomon was blessed with going to verse 30 and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country in all the wisdom of Egypt so my brothers and sisters let's look at it from this point of view once again, if Solomon was the wisest man to ever set foot on the earth second to Yasha, and it's the Most High that blessed him exceedingly, this most wise man on the earth in his time of writing Proverbs, why would he use two different words when referring to wisdom, one generic and one specific to the Holy Spirit? I think he would know which, which would be proper and correct when referencing skill or wisdom the Holy Spirit herself. It's pretty simple. This is common sense. Context is everything. Also, let's look at the last three words of 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 30 that we just read. It's, it's saying that, and it says, I'll just read it from the top. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. So, kind of a, a dumb question to ask, but just so people get the understanding. Does Egypt have its own Holy Spirit? If this word Kakama is referencing the Holy Spirit, and this is saying the wisdom of Egypt. Does Egypt have its own Holy Spirit? La. -a. So um, with that, we're staying in First Kings. Let's go to chapter 11. Let's get 41. Once again, we're staying in First Kings. Let's get chapter 11 and verse 41. And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of of the acts of Solomon so we can read of Solomon's skill his wisdom in the sense of advice we have Proverbs we have Ecclesiastes Song of Solomon wisdom of Solomon giving us wisdom skill of thoughts how to be wise um, okay here so now within this lesson as I'm just going down the line in order of the books of the Bible we will look at a verse with the Strong's number H2452 and, uh, let me see here I think we're going to go ahead and well, we'll go ahead and go over it. Is it H2452 has the same pronunciation as H2451. So we're going to go ahead and read it. This is in the book of Ezra chapter 7 and verse 25. And this is speaking of the wisdom of the most high. His own wisdom. Once again, Ezra 7 and 25. And now, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy power, that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy power, and teach ye them. Teach ye them that know them not. So this is speaking of the wisdom of the Most High, specific wisdom that he has as well. Um, so this is the wisdom of the Most High. Of course, being the almighty power, he can have his own wisdom separate from the Holy Spirit. Um, the Most High is not her and she is not him. So remember, let's use basic common sense and context. And also, um, just a little side note, um, this is it's also the Chal Chaldean form. Um, as some of, the, some of the words in the scriptures are in Chaldean. Um, when you go through your strong concordance and you go... You go through it sometimes you'll see on the definition definition it'll say assyrian sometimes it'll say you know called the inform or, or whatnot so let's get back to the strong's h2451 and let's get we're going to start at proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1 and keep in mind solomon is the one that wrote uh, the book of proverbs so once again this is proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1 and it reads the proverbs of solomon 
the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. So we can easily precept this verse with 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 41, speaking of the wisdom of Solomon. So we're now going to look at a Strong's number. That's also another, another form for the word wisdom. And it's in verse 3 that we just went over. And I'll read it again. It says, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. So we'll notice this word right here in verse 3 is wisdom. But in Hebrew, it is, in fact, a different word with an entirely different pronunciation that has been translated to wisdom. So it is in your strong Concordance, H7919. And once again, that is in your Strong's Concordance, H7919. And it is Shaka. And it is to be causatively make or act circumspect, circumspect and hence intelligent. Consider, expert, instruct, prosper, prudent, deal prudently, give, skill, skillful, have good success, teach, have, under, have understanding, make to understand, wisdom, uh, be, behave, self, consider, make wise, wisely, guide, and wittingly. <coughs> so once again, that's another word for wisdom in the Hebrew. Um, as we can see, context is everything, and this one isn't ref referring to her specifically. So next, um, bear with me here. We're now going to hit some scripts with H2454, form of the word of wisdom in Hebrew. And let's pay close attention to the context and the application and who it's referring to. As we can see, H2451 has many generic applications as skill, wisely, and wit. But when it comes to H2454, which is Kakamawa, let's see how, how it is being used, because context is everything when it comes to scriptures. Um, so with that, we're sticking in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, but let's jump down to verse 20. And it reads, Wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the street so now we know this is specifically talking about the holy spirit once again it says wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the street so let's pay attention to the specific word uses it's referring to her as in the holy spirit we know according to wisdom of solomon that the holy spirit's name is wisdom but a specific kind of wisdom so once again that's h2454 and it is Kakamawath, and it is wisdom, every wise woman. And it only occurs in the King James Bible five times, as opposed to Kakama, which uh, occurs in the King James Bible 149 times. So we know that this form is specific when speaking about her. And um, once again, in the Brown's Driver Briggs definition, it is just wisdom. And, you know, some people, they say, well, look, you know, it says it's a collateral form of H2451. And it's like, yeah, you know. Uh, but that's, that's, what some, that's what somebody said. So we're going to do like what our forefathers did. And um, I know brothers and sisters on the conference line, you can't, you can't view this. But those on uh, Periscope and on YouTube, you can. Uh, we're going to do what our forefathers did. And we're going to go as it is written. So as it is written, we're going to open this JPS uh, to knock for the brother out there on um, YouTube as we can see see where I have it underlined um, you can read where it says slack you wisdom cry it out right and then you can see in the Hebrew that word right there kakamawath for my brothers and sisters out there in uh, Periscope, you can see right here, this is Proverbs 1 and 20, wisdom crieth out, right? And here in the Hebrew, we have it right there, Kakamawath, as it is written according to the scriptures. So, once again, we understand that the strongest importance, it is a, it is a tool to use but we do what our forefathers did. They went into the records as it is written. They opened the scroll. It was right there. And that's how they rolled with it. Um, so with that, let's get back to, uh, let me see here.
let me go over my notes here. It says as we as we can see, it's only used five times in comparison to the 149 times H2451 occurs. So this one is specific to her. Now let's look at another verse so that they can bear witness to one another. Now some might say, you know, well it seems like H25 H2451 uh, comma being used as many times and in some cases it can refer to her but all the other times this word is used is in actuality bears witness to its generic application this form h2454 is extremely specific so you know let's get that other precept once again it, we're staying in the book of proverbs but we are now going to chapter 9 and we're going to start at verse 1 once again we're staying in proverbs we're going to get chapter 9 and verse 1 <coughs> and it reads wisdom hath builded her house she hath hewn out her seven pillars so once again I'll praise to the most high higher we see this word used specifically for her wisdom hath builded her house so let's keep in mind Solomon penned the book of Proverbs he was the wisest man on the earth ever second to Yasha I think he would know uh, what form to use so just like I showed showed y'all in the uh, it's not in Proverbs 1 and 20 we're now going to go to Proverbs 9 and 1 in the Tanakh and show everybody. So, right here, as we can see, wisdom. And here it is in Hebrew right there. Kakamawath. Brothers and sisters out there on Periscope. See? word wisdom right kind of blurry it's like you and in the Hebrew there it is right there Kakamawath as it is written that's how we deal with the scriptures we get understanding through the precepts and as it is written and I'm just you know using your standard JPS Hebrew English to not the same one that everybody wanted to get when we learned the name of the Most High so that we can open it up and show people. Hey, it says right here, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. It says, Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. And, you know, going over that, you know, people say, well, this is, you know, uh, Kakama, what is a collateral form of Kakama? Well, to some extent, when you want to go over um, so-called uh, language rules, um, the same thing could be said about the Most High's name. That's that's what the people that call him the Tetragrammaton do. They say, well, you know, uh, Yahweh means he is. You know, we can't say I am, you know, so we have to say he is. That's the, that's the, the same excuse that they make. So, you know, we really can't go in and go to these so-called language rules. Like, hey, wait a minute. This is the first person, second person, third person. If that's how it is written... That's how it is written. Collateral form, this and that. No, this is what is written in the scriptures. This is just how we have to accept it. It was good enough for our forefathers. That's what we have to roll with. It's in our records, you know. And as we went, you know, we're going to still go over the precepts, more precepts. But as we went over the precepts, we can definitely see that Kakama just has a, a very generic application. Whereas when we just went over Kakama Wath, um, referring to the Holy Spirit specifically, just showed you in the JPS to knock in the Hebrew. So now um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get we're going to stay in the book of Proverbs, it's like it. Proverbs chapter four, and we're going to get verse five. Once again, we're going to get Proverbs chapter four and verse five, but we're going to go go over some more precepts that have H two four five one to comma. And it reads, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So we can see we get wisdom, meaning skill, wisely and wit. Then we must get understanding, which through the spirit of the most high we are doing at this very moment. Um, so now let's get verse five. It says, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Verse seven, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So we must always remember that wisdom is principle when it comes to skill, wisely, wit. It is the first thing that you get. 
and then you get the understanding. So now let's go to Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 4. And we're going to now get, um, get some verses where Solomon, referring, he's referring to wisdom as her. And the word we're going over is kakama because it is a feminine word. But he's also referring to understanding as a female as well. So now, you know, this is where we go to distinguish, you know, Solomon speaking metaphorically about wisdom and not actually speaking about the Holy Spirit, Kakamawa. So once again, this is Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 4. And it reads, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. So now we can see, you know, wisdom in the form of skill wisely wit being referred to as a woman in this case a sister is the holy spirit set apart and never been flesh right yet we call yasha our big brother because he walked the earth in the flesh it's saying to to call wisdom our sister and understanding our kinswoman uh, because a sister would come before a cousin which is what a, a kinswoman is in the scriptures so precepting that to the scripts up above you know get wisdom get understanding it's in order so now we see understanding being referred to by solomon as a woman metaphorically just like wisdom is as well so we got more let's go to proverbs chapter 8 and let's get verse one verse uh one and you can notice these, these verses, you know, it's just showing that wisdom is being, uh, wisdom and understanding are both being referred to as hers. Once again, we're going to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 1. And it reads, Do with not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. So now understanding has a voice. Um, so now we see H245, what is being used here. We know it's a feminine form of the word, and just like in Proverbs 7 and 4, we see understanding being referred to in the same manner. Once again, and, and look at the order. It's first wisdom, then understanding. Well, a cry would be something that's loud, and it would be heard over someone just speaking, somebody simply just putting forth their voice. So it's in the, it's in the same order as above. But notice how not just wisdom is referred to as feminine, but understanding is also used as if speaking of a woman. So now let's get let's jump down to verse 11 in the same chapter chapter 8 and verse 11 it says for wisdom is better than rubies I mean all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it so now we see wisdom in which the variation we're going over again is h2451 we now see at the end of this verse that wisdom is just referred to as a it we know that the Holy Spirit is not an it so you know always pay attention to context now we're gonna get verse 12 and um, you know some some might you know look at this verse and say well it says you know well let's just read it first Proverbs 8 and 12 it says I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of what he invents so at this point I'd like to point out you can stop here and go you know you can read Proverbs 8 from the top at any time and look, you know, did Solomon write, wisdom saith unto me, or thus saith wisdom? I don't, I, I didn't think so. If you went back and checked, um, he's speaking of a skill, wisely wit, wisdom in a sense of broad application, not specific as we went over the variation specific unto her. So we're now going to hit the word prudence in this same verse. And it is Hebrew word 6195. Uh, once again, it's 6195, and it is Irama, and it means trickery or, in a good sense, discretion, guile, prudence, subtlety, wilily, and wisdom. So, another word for wisdom through skill and prudence, subtlety, wilily, and wisdom. You can find out witty and knowledge of witty invention. So, let's think about this for a minute. I can't speak for anyone and use the word I. In the beginning of the set in the beginning of any sense i can't say i you know went to the store and i'm like hey you know what uh you know i'm speaking about my brother Quahal. when i said i i'm speaking of him no um and let's, let's keep this in mind too the most high when he spake unto moses we can read and you know let's just go over this these examples here the most high he spake unto moses saying 
And Yasha said, you know, just think about it. Every time it occurs, he so says, and the Most High spake unto Moses, tell the children of Israel, you know, these commandments or whatever it may be. When we read in the scriptures, it says, and Yasha saith unto them. So, you know, it would say, if this is the actual Holy Spirit speaking, it would, uh, Solomon would have wrote, you know, and the Holy Spirit, you know, saith unto me, and wisdom saith unto me. So we know that this he's, he's speaking metaphorically of her. Um, so I'd like to point out that nowhere is it saying that she's speaking for herself. You know, it would say so. Common sense would tell you. Um, and Solomon being the wisest man on earth, second to Yasha, he would know what word to use specifically like he did in Proverbs 1 and 20 and Proverbs 9 and 1. And so now this is where it might get tricky or hard to grasp because I myself stumbled a bit when I came to these verses. Um, at that time, um, you know, I was going over this and um, I was told that, you know, verse verse 8 and 12, uh, you know, would, would destroy the presentation I had put together. And, I, you know, I kind of stumbled at it, you know, and I, I prayed and fasted over it. And, and then I thought about it for a minute. Um and I had to really wrap my mind around this one. And then it dawned on me. Does not the Most High have his own personal wisdom pertaining to him? Of course he does. He had to have it in order to give it to the Holy Spirit. Just like through, just to, just like through the precepts, uh, you know, if Solomon has his own wisdom, H2451, skill, wit, and wisdom, uh, of course the Most High can have his own wisdom set apart from the Holy Spirit. And his skill and craft has always been with him. He's the self-existent the eternal power before everything, including the Holy Spirit. It's pretty simple. So it's kind of like when people try to minimize the Most High by saying, you know, the, you know, God is just love. And yet we we have all these different attributes of anger and, and hate and, and jealousy and, and happiness and joy. But the Most High, he's just love. But it's, it's like saying that we are now more complex than the Most High because he can only do one thing. So it's in that same same context by now saying, well, um, the Most High can't have his own wisdom set apart from the Holy Spirit, but Solomon can and other people that we read in the scriptures earlier can have wisdom of their own, but the Most High can't. It's just common sense. Um, so with that, let's jump down to Proverbs 8 and 22. And, um, you know, I, I'll let everybody, I'd like for everybody to, you know, read the entire chapter of Proverbs 8. We're gonna we're gonna get Proverbs eight and twenty two. So we're gonna jump down from twelve to twenty two. This is the Most High possessed me in the beginning of His way before His works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet He had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. So now let's go back a few chapters in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 19. Once again, you know, some people might go to this proverbs 8 and 12 and say well you know it says i wisdom dwell with prudence it's it's her speaking but all throughout the scriptures we we have the example of it being written down you know and the most high said unto moses and the most high commanded unto moses speak unto the children of israel and say you know such and such and yasha said unto his disciples and yasha said unto you know it's always the scriptures are always letting us know when they are speaking so Let's get Proverbs 3 and 19. It says, The Lord by wisdom, Kakama, H2451, hath founded the earth by understanding, hath he established the heavens. So, once again, if Solomon can have his own wisdom, the Most High had his own wisdom uh, separate from the Holy Spirit. So now, we're going we're gonna to get Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23. And... Um, it's just, it's just a funny question that we're going to ask after this, but it just goes to show the, the common sense that we must put into these things. 
So once again, we're going to Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23. And it reads, Buy the truth and sell it not, semicolon. Also wisdom, comma, and instruction, comma, and understanding. So it's saying to buy the truth and sell it not, and also to buy wisdom, to buy instruction, and buy understanding. So it's a funny question. Can you buy wisdom? Meaning, can you buy the Holy Spirit? I mean, you can pay to pay someone to teach you different skills of carpentry and, and masonry and things of that nature, but you cannot buy the Holy Spirit. So this word here in Proverbs 23 and 23 is H2451. So now we're going to get a precept showing that you cannot buy the Holy Spirit. And we're going to go to the book of Acts. We're going to get chapter 8 and we're going to get verse 18. Once again, we're going to the book of Acts. We're going to get chapter 8 and verse 18. And um, for those that are catching this on the back end, uh, the title of the lesson is The True Name of the Holy Spirit, Kakamawath. And uh, Salaki, I got my, my dogs crying here in the background. Um, so here it is, the book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of the Most High may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of the Most High. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray, Ahia, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So clearly through the precepts, we see that we can't buy wisdom. So, you know, Solomon, he would not contradict anything that, that he has written in the scripture. So once again, we're now going to go over the variations for H2454, which is Kakamawath, which is, in fact, the name of the Holy Spirit. So once again, we hit Proverbs 1 and 20. We're going to go to it again. We're just going to read over um, these four verses. So once again, this is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. We know that word there is kakamawath. So now let's go to Proverbs 9 and 1. Once again, we're going to Proverbs 9 and 1, and it reads, Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. Once again, we know that this wisdom is H2454, which is kakamawath that is speaking of her. Now let's go to Psalms 49, Psalms chapter 49 and verse 3. And it reads, my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. So this is H2454. So our heart should speak of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Proverbs 24 and 7. Once again, we're going to go to the book of Proverbs. We're going to get chapter 24 and verse 7. And it reads, wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. So we, we know according to the scriptures, a fool cannot obtain wisdom. Um, meaning the Holy Spirit. It, it, the Holy Spirit, she's too high uh, for a fool to have that type of understanding. Um, we're going to read over a, a few other precepts um, when we get to the conclusion of this lesson, which we're almost at. So all the verses that we hit were H2454, and that is Kakamawath. Um, so with that, we are now going to get St. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19. Once again, we're going to St. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19. And what we're going to get out of this is, is a quote we all know. Wisdom is justified over children. So keep this in mind as we go over a few other verses um, for some understanding on um, how you can see who wisdom is dealing with. So with that, St. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19. And it reads, the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. So with that, brothers and sisters, um, we are now going to get a few other scripts and then we will conclude tonight's lesson. Um, so we're going to go to the uh, wisdom of Solomon in your Apocrypha, and we are going to get chapter 1 and we're going to start at verse 4 once again this is wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 4 for for into a malicious soul 
wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So we know if someone's being malicious, they're full of malice, um, the Holy Spirit, she's not going to enter into them. She's not going to dwell with them. Uh, and she's also not going to dwell with the body that is subject unto sin. So hold your spot there. Let's go to the book of Sirach. Um, let's get chapter 4 and we're going to get verse uh let's see here verse 11 just to get some understanding how she will walk with you at first but once you have the understanding you must you know you must put the things of the world down and, and stop living lawless and and take heed unto her discipline so once again this is Sirach chapter 4 we're going to start at verse 11 this is wisdom exalted her children and layeth hold of them that seek her he that loveth her loveth life and they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entereth, the Most High will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. And them that love her, the Most High doeth love. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations, which is our rightful position on the earth. Um, and he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her. And his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. So if you go wrong, she will forsake you. Going back to uh, verse Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 4. I'll read it again. It says, For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So at first she will walk with you as you're getting this understanding. But if you can't start being obedient, she will give you over unto your own ruin. Um, verse 5, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee to seat. So if anybody's being deceptive, anybody's using any type of tactics to try to get you to believe any kind of doctrine that's not found within the scriptures, knowing that it says the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee to seat, she will flee. She will not be dealing with that person. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. For wisdom is a loving spirit. And will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For Ahiah is witness of his reins, and a true beholder of his heart, and a hearer of his tongue. So, understand that wisdom is a loving spirit. So, you know, when we're dealing with our brethren, we're dealing with our brothers and sisters. And, you know, there, there's no long patience, there's no meekness, there's no humility. Um, know that at that time, those are works of the flesh and not works of the spirit. Because it says that she is a loving spirit. Um, so with that, let's go to, we're going to stay in Wisdom of Solomon. And let's get chapter 6. And we're going to start at verse 12. And uh, we're just going over these scriptures just to get an understanding. Um, brothers and sisters should know as they're dealing with people. Um, what type, you know, attributes that they would have. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her, in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is that desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be, in, be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, that ye may reign forevermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity and bring the knowledge of her into light and will not pass over, over the truth. 
neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship uh, with wisdom. So, understand if you might be dealing with brothers that might have a, a jealousy spirit. She's not dwelling with them, as we just read. Neither will I go with every with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. So, you know, just, just a few scriptures. I mean, when it comes to the wisdom of Solomon and when it comes to the book of Sirach, there are so many scriptures. I mean, those in books in entirety in themselves um, have so much, uh, so much wisdom in them for us, for our understanding. I mean, how should we should deal with one another? Uh, but with that, brothers and sisters, that concludes this lesson. just want to say Salaki if it seemed like I was um, moving fast through it. Um, but I'm kind of, you know, dealing with some pain here. So I um, just want to bid everybody out there on Periscope uh, a higher speed. And most high willing, we will see you um, next week. And Kwam uh, Yashirala. Also, if you uh, have questions or comments, um, you can um, call in the conference. It's 302 uh, 302 201-1110. Once again, that's 302-201-1110. And the code is 702-706. Shabbat shalom. Kwam yashallah. Let me stop this recording here for uh, YouTube.